With summer just around the corner, one of the season's favorite pastimes may actually be one of the most dangerous for children. According to the CDC, drowning is the second leading cause of death for children under the age of 15. And in nearly half of all drowning instances involving kids, adults are within just 25 yards. In fact, 10% of adults will witness the situation without even realizing what is happening. Former U.S. Coast Guard officer and water safety expert Mario Vittoni is author of the Slate article, Drowning Doesn't Look Like Drowning. I spoke with him earlier and asked him why drowning often goes undetected and what someone who is drowning might look like in the water. Well, there's, there's two phases. There's aquatic distress, which we've seen, and people will talk about, well, I knew I was in trouble and I would wave and call for help. That's aquatic distress. When you go into the instinctive drowning response, that's when uh, you're no longer capable to maintain your own airway. And uh, a lot of times, you know, the head will be back, eyes will be glassed over. Uh, people will be looking towards safety or looking towards shore. Vertical in the water, very little or no supporting kick, mostly just arm movement, and it's sort of a lateral splashing down of the water to try and get the, and their head will bob up and below the surface of the water uh, repeatedly. This lasts for between 30 to 60 seconds. Sometimes it can happen entirely underwater. So you have to be watching this happen to catch it. And I think it's so important to underscore uh, some of the things that you uh, just mentioned. So it's not just that someone isn't going to be yelling, a child will not be crying out, it's that they will be physically unable to cry out if they are actually in danger of drowning. It, the, the response and the movements are, are instinctual, so they won't be able to cry out. They won't be able to reach out. So if you throw them a line, they can't stop drowning and grab the line. And so it's all complete instinct movements. They can't call out for help. Speech is an overlaid, an overlaid function of breathing. If you can't breathe, you can't speak. So that's why it's very quiet. Hmm. And so how long, Mario, does someone have between the time they really start to experience the beginning phases of drowning and the time that they actually are in danger of going under completely? The, the instinctive drowning response, again, lasts about 30 to 60 seconds at the most. You know, the older you are and the stronger you are, the longer it can last. Uh, and again, a lot of it can happen under the water. They don't stop to struggle. They'll just be submerged uh, while they continue to struggle. So it happens very fast. So if you witness it, you have to get help immediately. I like to think that as a parent, I'm vigilant. Uh, I will say that when there is a lifeguard around, sometimes that gives a sense of sort of false security. Is that enough supervision? If you're just sort of around your child, not necessarily in the water, but if there's a lifeguard on duty, do you think that's enough generally to supervise completely a child in the water? Someone else watching is always better, but it's really hard to pay attention. And lifeguards have to focus. And if you've, if you've ever tried to focus for a solid 15 minutes, it's really tough to do. So I don't think it is enough. But, you know, if your child, if, if you're with your child, they're not a sincerely strong swimmer. I like to be with them, what's called touch supervision. I'm close enough to them to reach them. And so you really can't be sitting on the side of the pool. Uh, with, with your non-swimming child and, and just be watching them. You certainly can't have your cell phone out. You have to be paying attention to them. And I, I like to tell parents to be close. Uh, and, if, and if you can't be close, then they can't swim that day. You're gonna have to wait till you can be there. And touch supervision because a child can go under in seconds. Right away. And, and for every child that drowns, five are seriously injured. So you, you, you can't, just because you save them from drowning doesn't mean you're out of trouble. Those aquatic injuries can be very serious. So just bottom line it for us, Mario, what are the tips, the most important things you think to keep kids safe in the water this summer? Well, I think first you have to teach kids to not go to, the, not be uh, near the water without an adult. And so to, to teach them that they, they should never swim alone or never get near the water without adult supervision. For parents, it's just vigilant. You have, if, you're, if you can't watch them physically, if you can't keep your eyes on them, then you're not prepared to watch them. And, and to have at pool parties and, and any event where you're in the water, uh, swimming or, or at pools, is to have someone who's the designated water watcher. That there's always one parent who's always watching the water and not talking to anybody, not socializing at the party, doing nothing but watching the kids. Uh, finally, Mario, in your own experience, have you ever had to save someone who's drowning? I have. I was a lifeguard for most of my life and then a rescue the rest uh, for the, uh, the rest of my adult life. So I, I've been in a lot of situations where uh, you just jump in and pick them up. And uh, it, it's happened a few times and I've seen this a lot. And I think what really prompted me to write the article was 
it wasn't part of my training as a Coast Guard rescue swimmer, and I had to figure out why. Hmm. All right, Mario Vittoni, really important information. It's, a, like I said earlier, a sobering piece that you've written here, but really eye-opening, critical information. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.